Have you ever wished that you could have a sewing expert on hand to help you with your questions? Now you can. Sew Confidence Series 10 brings expert Linda Lee to you through online classes and monthly live Q&A sessions. Join Linda as she sews a new garment each month. She'll walk you through the process, sharing her signature techniques for creating professional-looking garments. Each project features tips and tricks for working with different fabrics, everything from cotton shirting to jersey knits to silk. Head over to SewingWorkshop.com to sign up for the Sew Confidence Series and shop their full garment pattern collection, as well as their curated selection of fashion fabrics and notions. Hi, and welcome to Sewing with Threads, the monthly podcast by the staff of Threads Magazine. I'm your host, Editorial Director, Sarah McFarland, and I'm joined by our Senior Technical Editor, Carol Frazier. Hi, Carol. Hi. (laughs) Today, we're going to talk with Linda Lee. Hi, Linda. Hi. Linda Lee is the owner of the Sewing Workshop, a pattern collection, and online fabric and notion store. She's the creator of Sew Confident, a series of monthly sewing tutorials for a community of garment sewing enthusiasts. She teaches 11 classes on Craftsy.com and has written 13 books on the fine art of sewing for fashion and home interiors. And Linda has written a number of wonderful articles for Threads Magazine as well. And today with Linda, we're going to talk about a challenge for many sewers, and that is fitting pants. For the month of March uh, 2021, Linda is sponsoring a free PDF download of an excellent article she wrote for Threads called Self-Fit Your Pants. You can just visit threadsmagazine.com to get your copy and benefit from Linda's expertise. The article includes information on measuring your body, assessing fitting issues by reading lines and wrinkles on a muslin, and pattern adjustments for a refined fit. So before we get into that, though, Linda is a new guest for us, so she gets the five sewing questions. So, Linda, who taught you how to sew? Basically, no one. Uh, I'm pretty self-taught, but I was the beneficiary of a mother who allowed me to use her sewing machine when I was really young. So it was set up in the hallway, I had access to it, and I fell in love with sewing. Now, I do have to say that I had great teachers in junior high and high school, and then did go to Kansas State University and study uh, some fashion design, ended up in interior design. But, you know, I had some great teachers along the way. But I'm one of those people that's just spent hours and hours and hours, what, those 10,000 hours, isn't that the magic number, yeah. uh, in my sewing room and, and have kind of honed my skills over the years. What is your favorite fabric to sew? It used to be linen because it was easy. But now it's knit, and I know that because I used to have only cotton thread in my stash of threads, extra threads. And now polyester thread has overtaken that heap, and now I know I sew on a lot more knits than I ever have before, and it's my go-to fabric. Linda, what is your favorite sewing word or term? I love the term feed dogs because I remember being on the set of a television show years ago and the camera people were just, I don't know, they thought that term was just hilarious. And so on the sewing machine, they would put a little sign that said, don't feed the feed dogs. And I don't know, it just stuck with me. It's a funny term. (laughs) Uh, What are you currently sewing? I have a monthly obligation now to sew a garment for our Sew Confident program. So for the month of March, uh, I'm getting ready to finally do the the final project, which is a flowy, loose, rayon crepe jacket that has some piping and pockets. And it's all about matching patterns on loose fabrics and sewing those those fabrics that move too much on the cutting table and the sewing machine and all of that. So that's currently what I'm sewing, although my daughter just visited came here yesterday to watch the Super Bowl, which, you know, we don't talk about now. Uh, And so I made a top for her, a knit top, and that was promised for Christmas, and I'm finally finishing it. So I've got a couple couple projects for her in mind this week while she's here. It's really fun to sew for friends and family. Love it. Yeah. Linda, what do you love most about sewing? When you sent me that question, I, I thought it should be something like, 
oh, you know, it makes me feel relaxed and takes me out of my moment. And, and then I realized, no, not always. And the reason I really like to sew is because I love the final product. I love to wear what I make. Excellent answer. Well, thank you for answering the five questions. And now we can move into pants fitting. And for any of our listeners who are new to sewing, what would you want them to know maybe before they get into it, uh, what they need to know about fitting pants? The one thing that people don't want to do is measure themselves, or at least measure themselves accurately, or make pants for the body that they have today. They want to make pants for the body they think they'll have after they lose the five pounds. Uh, But you need to measure yourself, and we'll talk about that probably in a little bit, where and accurately and all that. But you need to measure yourself and be realistic about what you look like and what you're going to make. Excellent point, yeah. (laughs) What do you need to fit pants on yourself, just in terms of equipment? Uh... You need some, uh, some drafting tools, although if you're not a pattern drafter, you don't have to invest, I don't think, in a lot of tools. But I do use some tissue paper, and I use medical exam paper, a roll of that, for my excess paper that I add length or details to. Uh, some removable tape, and I use scotch removable tape because I want to be able to get that off of the tissue paper without ripping things. I use a very specific red pencil that is a Prismacolor, I don't remember the color, but it's the red pencil that has an eraser. And I like to use that so that I can erase it. I don't use markers and, and uh, ballpoint pens and that sort, sort of things. I have two rulers that I just can't really live without, and one is a straight edge, which is a two inch by 18 inch clear ruler that has a little grid to it. And then I have a clear hip curve, which seems to be a curve that just works for almost everything, for blending those lines. Um, A tape measure, of course, and I use a very specific tape measure that has a number one on both sides at each end. And I can talk about that as to why I want that. And some elastic to put around my waist. And I always put the width of elastic uh, for measuring that I'm going to actually use in the pants. So in my case, mostly it's one inch. Or maybe the width of the waistband that you're going to use. I don't use quarter inch like a lot of people do. I, I want to measure from how the pants are going to sit on me. And that means a waistband or a piece of elastic. Oh, that's a great tip. And, you know, it's funny because uh, we have gotten at threads behind the scenes. So we use that medical exam paper yeah. all the time. It's a wonderful value. And I know the exact pencils you're referring to because I like them for illustrations and they are erasable. Yes. 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 So could you tell me a little more about the particular um, tape measure that you like to use and why you like to have it have a one on both ends? The, uh, the tape measure, as I said, has this number one doesn't have metric on one side and inches on the other. It has inches on both sides, one at each end on the opposite sides. And the reason I like that is that I want to know what my measurements are for my full hip and my high hip, but I want to know where those measurements are. So if I measure, let's say, around my hips, then I want to take the other end of that tape measure up to the bottom of the, the elastic that I've put around my waist. And then I know that that hip measurement is 7, 8, 9, 10 inches, whatever it is, below my waist. Because otherwise, you don't know where to measure on your pattern to know where the full hip would be on that pattern. And that tape measure is a one-step process so that you can have the tape around your full hip and know how far down it is for both the full hip and the high hip. So that's why I like that tape measure. They're not that easy to find. You have to look. You can't just walk into any store and pick up any uh, tape measure. You have to search it out a little bit. I recommend that listeners look up your article and download it because you have, there are photos that show how this works. Okay. If you're you're not, you know, if you're not picturing it from hearing Linda talk, it's easy to see. And it is a really smart way because you know, a lot of pants fitting uh, methods say measure down nine inches and make the change there if you need to add or subtract. But your fullest area may not be at nine inches below your waist. That's a really key thing to know. And it's good to point right. that out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
And a full hip may be smaller than a high hip. A high yeah. hip is a tummy, uh, those haunches, is that what we call them? Those high hip things, those, you know, those things that hang yeah. in the back of you. <laughs> so sometimes people are that shape, and you can't mm-hmm. assume that your full hip is your widest part. Linda, is it possible to take these measurements very accurately yourself, or uh, do you need some uh, fitting measuring help? I think there are a few, and the most essential ones, that you can do by yourself. So you want your waist measurement, plus an inch, because we all suck it in a little bit when we're taking that measurement. So you want to breathe, but I add one inch to whatever that measurement is, to prepare for that, whatever you ate that day, too, you know. So then you want the high hip, full hip, stri- what I call the stride, which is the crotch. So that's the full front and back of the crotch measurement. And I'm measuring below that, waist, uh, that elastic, from the bottom of the elastic in the front to the bottom of the elastic in the back. And you can do that on your own as well. And then I want the full length uh, from below the waist at the side seam to the floor, and then I subtract an inch. Or sometimes I'll just measure pants that I have that I like and know that's what the length I want to use. Uh, But whatever, I have a, I I want that measurement on seat ways. I think that's it. Those five measurements will get you pretty much anything you need for that initial first step in getting a pant to at least go around you. And then you can do some fine tuning from there. But without those key measurements right there, you're, you're going to be in trouble to just pull a pattern out of the envelope and start. And what, what measurement do you use to choose the pattern size you want? I use the full hip always. Mm-hmm. And then I ad- adjust from there. But all of the lengthening and shortening adjustments happen first. But it's all based on, you, let's say I'm nine inches, uh, my full hip is nine inches below my waist. So at nine inches down on the side seam, I'm going to mark that line and measure the width of that pattern, the circumference of the pattern. So both the front and the back, finished measurements only, so I'm subtracting seam allowances, of course, and determining how much ease there is. And for most people, four inches of ease is pretty minimal, minimum for what you need for a pants. Now that's We're not talking about slim-fitting yoga pants and all that sort of thing. We're talking about, you know, ready-to-wear dress pants, we'll call them, although nobody's dressing, but uh, you know what I mean. Pants that, that, uh, regular pants, whether they're elastic or not elastic waist pants. You want four inches. And so you know that that is your starting size, whatever measurement that would be. You would take, you would measure yourself, you would choose the pattern size from the back of an envelope or the flap of the envelope wherever that measurement is and that would be starting size and that's the size you measure and if you don't have that four inches or so then you're going to move either smaller or larger from there but that is your starting size and from there you're going to then adjust for the high hip and the waist and the length and all of that that high, that full hip is the the first one Linda what are some of the most common common uh, fitting problems you see with I pants? think that people forget to think about that, that stride measurement. And so I see a lot of pants that um, are really just too tight in the back. They're, they're, I don't know how to say that delicately, uh, really, <laughs> but you can see it. It's, it's not, they're not smooth across the back. A lot of people have trouble with pants that are not high enough in the back, and then there's too much height in the front. As we age and uh, get softer to shoe, uh, you know, waist, waistlines can really be on an angle now. And so they don't, people don't know what, how to raise the back and lower the front. And so that, that stride measurement is really, really key to uh, measure and figure out where you are. But it's also something that I don't think can be adjusted until you're, you're in the muslin or finished pants stage. You can't really do that in the initial pattern alteration of figuring out how much is in the front and how much you need in the back. Yeah, so I, mean, I always can... recommend that whatever, if you're making a muslin, that you just add height all the way around. And then when you're finished the pants, 
before the waistband is put on. Then you put them on, adjust those pants so that the, the, uh, the side seam is straight and the crotch feels good, and then you can put up the elastic or a band around your waist and mark where that sits on you. And it's sometimes a really wonky shape, but that's, that's okay. It's what you are. That's true. It's very, that's, that's a really hard thing to visualize. It's very simple to, you know, to mentally say, oh, I can see that this is not big enough to go around my biggest part of my body, but that stride and the, the crotch curve of the pants is just, it, you, that's, that's not something you know what, it, how it looks really in cross-section exactly. So right. you, you do need to if, kind of put it on and drape it sort of on your body a bit. Yeah, yeah if, you, if you have the benefit of having someone who can take a photo of the back of you, you know, pants, really, pants fitting really starts from the back, in my opinion. And so if you can get a, a picture or if you can somehow do a selfie in a mirror or something, get a, get a view of what those pants look like in the back. Sometimes it's just shocking. I, I, <laughs> you think, oh, these feel pretty good. They must look pretty good. And they don't. And we all probably buy pants and think they fit and then, you know, take a shot of that. And it's like, whoa, why did I buy those? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I think your your um, tip about a four is sort of planning for four inches of ease. That is more than I would have said, but I think it rings true for me because I think if I go oh two to three inches and then I put them on, I'm like I, I always feel like this is not exactly how I want these to fit when I'm sitting down or or whatever. You know that I, a yeah. little bit of extra would have been great, and it wouldn't make the pants be too big still. Right. I think that uh, you think about it. That's pinching an inch. And then at each side. And then when you sit down, if you have soft tissue, that co- kind of collapses and fills out. If you're someone who's taught yoga for 40 years and you have a very taut body, you're not going to need four inches. But most of us need, I think, at least that in most woven pants, for sure. Mm-hmm. And if it's a stretch woven, do you, do you sort of go by the same amount anyway? I do. Now, if something's super, super stretchy, I might reduce that by an inch or so. But just because it's a stretch fabric doesn't really change my thought pattern very much. And I wanted to ask you, um, you have a lot of fabric knowledge. And how do you assess fabrics for different pant styles? How do you how do you go about that? If you if you fit a pant style, where do you go from there to make it in different fabrics? Well, I have to look at the style of the pants. And if I'm wanting some loose, flowing pants, uh, I'm looking for fabric that has drape. I think I wrote another article for Threads uh, some time back about the concept of drape and what that really means. And I am always looking for fabric that will make me look slimmer. I've yet to run into the person who says to me, you know, I want some fabric that makes me look bigger. Uh, I just... I don't run into those people. So I'm looking for slimming fabrics, and that means drape. And that's for a fabric or a a style that I I want to have a good hang, where it's a a vertical slimming hang. Now, if I'm going to make a slim pair of pants, then I'm going to look for something that has more structure, probably. And that could be a ponte knit or a stretch woven. Um, It's rare when I make any pants out of something like corduroy or duck cloth or I don't even make too many jeans, frankly, uh, just because I think they're not as slimming as I would like. Uh, so I don't know. So it's, it's style, how you want to uh, look and perceive yourself. And so you really have to take a look at the pattern that you're working with. I think we can link the um, that article on drape in the show notes for this episode so people can yeah. see that too. That was a hard article to write because how do you define drape? But I remember sending in, I think, three or four pairs of pants, uh, one in a four-ply crepe, which is, of course, the mother load of them all in terms of drape, super drapey, and then another pair of pants in black linen, both black same pattern, put them on the uh, same model, and the model looked slimmer in the drapey four-ply silk than she did in the linen, for example. And then you take the same pattern and make them in white, and you look much bigger 
even even after that. So it was it was an interesting concept. Even on those models for the magazine that are like no one I know, you know, really tall, really slim, uh, you could tell the difference in that article. Yes. Well, so much of what we're trying to teach for a very hands-on skill, a very tactile uh, experience, we have to come up with creative ways to demonstrate that in photographs, definitely. Are there certain facets or features to patterns that would make them less challenging to fit, that that, uh, a sewer could look for in patterns? Well, there's sort of two ways. Well, the first that comes to mind is uh, the more seams you have, the more places there are to modify fit. For instance, we have this pattern uh, that has actually a seam in the center front, seam in the center back, side seams, inner inseams. So that's like 10 seams or something like that. To, that's, that's probably not true. I can't do math. But um, and th- lots of seams where you can really begin to shape things. So the more seams, if you have a side seam, obviously, you're going to be able to shape things better. There are some one-seam pants out there that, while slimming, are maybe not for you because it's not easy to adjust those for shape, particularly if you have a small waist and bigger hips or bigger upper thighs, for example. That's harder. So more seams is one, but, but a pant that has side seams. Now, obviously, an elastic waist pant is easier to fit than a fitted pant. That's pretty, pretty obvious. It, uh, yeah, it's true. But, you know, I would say that um, it, it, they, they can be deceiving because they're comfortable and they don't have to snug up to your waist. That if you wear them, you could still have the problem of not having quite enough room for the seat. And then they still right. will tend to want to go down in the back, but you don't pick it up until you've made them and you're wearing them and you suddenly think these are not doing what they should do. But right. they also need adjustment a bit, possibly. Yeah. Yeah. If you have a favorite pa- pattern, can you try it in different uh, fabrics? Absolutely. I've made the same patterns over and over and over again from everything uh, from chiffon, literally, to wool crepe. Uh, linen, chambray, cottons. Yeah, I think that, interestingly enough, I've used the same pattern, and sometimes just the change in the fabric type will change the fit just a little bit. For instance, you might make pants in, let's say, cotton or linen, and then I made the same pattern in wool crepe, and they were looser, because wool crepe, the crepe has a little bit of give to it. So that goes back to your question about stretch wovens. Sometimes the texture, the construction of the uh, fabric will make it fit a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller. That's what's so difficult about being a sewer, because you don't know (laughs) until it's over (laughs) whether they're going to work or not. They may look great, You've sewn them perfectly, they look great on your hanger, and, they, and you just don't put them on, and there's a reason why, and it's usually fit or comfort in some way, and it's usually fabric-related. And you can't always tell what that's, what, how it's going to turn out. Linda, if, if I make a pants muslin, and I get a pretty good fit, and then I'm concerned about the final fit in perhaps a fabric that is quite different, um, what steps or precautions could I take to maybe make sure that that fashion fabric pair is going to be successful. Well, we talk about making muslins, and we, when we say that, we're generally meaning muslin. But it may be the chance for you to make the pair of pants in something that, as close as you can, resemble the f- actual fabric that you're going to use. Um, and use a less expensive version of something. For instance, you can buy linen cotton blends that are a lot less expensive than fine linens. So you're saving your great printed linen that you bought on a trip someplace, but go ahead and make the pants in that cotton linen uh, combo. I think that's if about they, the best. If the if the fashion fabric version comes out uh, a, a little bit uh, like the crepe example, a little bit uh-huh. bigger, that's solvable. I'm thinking about. Um, maybe extending my seam allowances if I'm going to uh, something that uh, has yes. got less well, give. Yeah. Obviously, the best thing to do is to baste your pants together before you <laughs> yeah. sew them, finish the seams, install the waistband, do all of that. So that is, and we forget to do that. We, we're so interested in having the finished product 
that we forget to fit as we go. So Yes, you're right. Yeah. And a basting, I love basting, and I'm always ready to put in the extra time for basting. I would rather pin than baste and then be able to really work with the basted garment. It's, yeah. a, it's a time saver in the long run, definitely. Well, it really is. And, you know, you can use, if you have a cover stitch machine, you can use a uh, chain stitch, which is basically a basting stitch. So that'll give you a nice look and be accurately sewn on the seam allowance. Uh, but you can rip it out with one swoop, which is kind of fun, actually. Oh, that does sound like fun. Maybe that's the reason I will finally get a cover stitch machine. Well, yes. If you, if you look at certain ready-to-wear brands, they use a chain stitch to construct a lot of knit garments. And I know that we think of chain stitch, or I think of chain stitch as a basting tool, but that's not really the case. It can be uh, a functional uh, seam finish, uh, both sides even. The chain stitch can be even the right side. Yes. Uh, this is this is a bit, a bit of a segue, but uh, that reminds me, I just yesterday uh, deconstructed a sweater. The arms were far too short. And then I had another sweater with arms that were far too short. So I took the front and the back of one sweater and made them into the sleeves for the other. Uh -huh. And both of the sweaters, they were ready to wear sweaters, they were constructed with a chain stitch. Yeah. I was very surprised. Mm -hmm. yeah. But once I got it going in the right direction, you're right, it just whipped right out. Yeah. I'm glad I didn't discover that possibly one day wearing either sweater because yeah. <laughs> it was yeah. not Pull the sturdiest. It, oops. <laughs> yeah, it was not the sturdiest mode of construction. Yeah. Yeah. You know, have you ever had something where the elastic in the waistband is sewn on with a chain stitch and it comes a little bit loose in the wash and then you just give it a little yank and the waistband yep. comes off entirely? Yep. Eek. Yeah, exactly. Not good. Yeah. Linda, as a pattern designer yourself, is there anything you build into your designs? Uh, or what's your philosophy about uh, designing pants so that perhaps they're easier to fit? Or, Well, my philosophy is if they fit me, then it's a pattern. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, that's an interesting question. I'm not necessarily thinking about fit when I'm choosing a design. I'm, I'm looking for a, a design that in two ways. One that's sort of basic, but I like things that have a little bit of a twist or an edge to them, too. Some detail that's more interesting than just the same old pants that you make all the time. But, uh, and, I, and I have to say, there are, we have two or three what we call slopers here. Uh, we have a sloper that we use routinely because we like the way it fits most people. And so from there, we've changed the details. So I know I can add an inseam pocket or a patch pocket, or I can change the shape of the leg to be more flared or more tapered, or even add a, a slit and a facing and a button in a loop or a, a front tuck or something. So I always encourage people to find the pants pattern that they they've refined and worked on and really like and then it's details after that we we have pants patterns that for instance we have this these west end pants that have really wide legs we're using the same sloper for a pant that has a very narrow leg and so people don't even recognize that it's the same sloper so i am trying to kind of consolidate the number of different fitting issues that we have within this pattern collection at least and if you are someone who's out there buying pants patterns, you know, maybe buy one or two elastic waist pants, maybe a one or two uh, with to have a waistband to them. But don't, don't refit and refit over and over and over again. Try to pare it down to one or two styles that you can work with and just change the details and the fabrications as well. Oh, excellent advice. Well, Linda, our time has flown by. Really? We're at, yes, yeah, that was that was a half an hour, if you can believe it. No. It's really been quick, yes. And I want to remind everybody to look for your download, Self Fit Your Pants, on our website. And thanks so much for talking with us. Well, thank you. This was fun. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you for listening. Follow Threads on social media and visit threadsmagazine.com to view show notes for this episode. While you're on the site, check out Threads Insider, our online membership with exclusive access to expert sewing techniques. Until next time, keep on sewing with threads.